Have you ever stopped to make a comparison with the modern day apostles versus the apostles that are in the Bible? You're gonna notice a pretty big difference between the two. There is a debate today whether there are modern day apostles. I don't know why there is a debate because I think the Bible is pretty clear. There are certain criteria that a person has to meet in order to become an apostle or to be an apostle. One, you have to have seen the resurrected Christ, meaning you had to have witnessed him with your own eyeballs after his resurrection. You have to be pretty old for that. These modern day apostles aren't that old. Secondly, you had to have been sent by Jesus. It's one thing to be sent by the church or sent by someone else sent by your best friend or to sent by be sent by another human being. But in this case, these apostles were literally sent by and commissioned by Jesus and they were endowed with power. But let's just put that to the side. Let's just not let the Bible get in the way of what true biblical apostles are. But I want to point out something that should be pretty noticeable, even amongst people who aren't really sure of the biblical requirements for an apostle. If you were to just stop and notice one, the humility between the apostles versus the apostles that we have today. I think it's pretty striking. Wherever I go, God rules. When I walk on White House grounds, God walks on White House grounds. When I walked in the river, God walked in the river. When I go into the dry cleaner, that dry cleaning place becomes holy. I had every right and authority to declare the White House as holy ground because I was standing there and where I stand is holy. I know they have never heard nothing like this. I get thousands of letters with that quote. Pastor mm -hmm. Jennings, I've never heard nothing like it. One man wrote me in his 80s. He said, I've been living 83 years. I've never heard a man like you. Yes. Greater work than these shall he do. Because I Yes, I did more work than the son of God. Forgetting the fact that there were no female apostles, even though some of them might want to dispute that, notice the level of arrogance with them versus what we see in the Bible. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in the Laconian language, the gods have become like men and have come down to us. And they were calling Paul, they were calling him Hermes as he was speaking, they were calling Barnabas Zeus because he was the chief speaker, uh, Paul being Hermes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their robes and rushed out into the crowd saying, men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of the same nature as you and preach the gospel to you that you should turn from these vain living things, these things to a living God. So notice what they did. We are not that special. We're just like you. And then they gave an emphasis on the gospel, which is what you don't see today with these apostles who claim to have more power wherever they walk. It's holy ground and that they have just as much power or can do more great things than the, than the son of man. Yeah, that's the kind of boasting that we shouldn't do. As a matter of fact, if we go and listen to what Paul says, Paul says in Romans 12, 3, he says not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to. But that's not the case with some of these apostles. Did you happen to notice how a lot of these modern day apostles even dress? To be here and to serve the God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Men in general wouldn't dress like that. And certainly apostles. As a matter of fact, Jesus actually called out the Pharisees and the rulers were dressing in this soft clothing. Something else that's also kind of a telltale sign of these modern day apostles is the fact that they have no good doctrine, no sound teaching. Do you know the most profound challenge with that? Adam did not have a body. Do the research. Clearly not the kind of teaching or thinking that would come from the mouth of an actual apostle. What you'll also notice is how often they have this emphasis on money. This part of my life, this little part, is called happiness. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I don't know that Paul or Peter or James or John or any of them would be, if they were apostles today, would be flying around in private jets and, and buying expensive uh, luxury cars for their wives and so forth. Now, I don't have a problem with people having money, but I don't even know that they would necessarily even be flaunting it. I don't think that Thaddeus or Bartholomew would be touting this expensive car that 
this apostle bought for his wife and then posting. I don't know that that would necessarily be in line or in keeping with an apostle. I certainly don't think that James or Thaddeus would be preaching about how to build wealth, how to be wealthy, at least not from the standpoint of an apostle. When God blesses you, take out your tithe. Believe in tithing. 10% and then take out your seed. Many people recommend 20%. And could you imagine Peter, Andrew, or Philip saying that you need to sow into the ministry to get deliverance? Many times the prophetic key is for the person who has the curse to sow to the kingdom of God, the true kingdom of God, where his power is, to sow, to give to God a, a good seed, a, not a dinky seed, but a good seed. And in the spiritual realm, it removes the person it withdraws that person from that curse that carried a lot of weight because of the money put on it. What these people embody is really what the Bible speaks of when Paul speaks of, that these are people that try to make merchandise of you, that they see this as a means of gain rather than godliness actually being the gain. Godliness to them is not a gain. What, what the appearance of godliness, what the appearance can bring to them, playing church, being apostle, what that can bring to them. It can bring them wealth. Now, this is probably the most striking difference between today's apostles versus the apostles of the Bible. We see how these apostles like to live. And of course, they live in the safest place in the world, in America. And But we see how they live really, for the most part, luxurious lifestyles. But compare that with not only how the apostles of the Bible live, but also how they died. Peter, who was considered the first among equals amongst the apostles, how did he die? Well, he was crucified upside down. At least that's what that's what tradition tells us. Is there any way to know for sure? No, but the, the, the prevailing thought behind some of these traditions are that this is how they died. We know for a fact from Acts that James himself was killed with a sword, likely beheaded. What about Andrew? Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross. Where was he crucified in? In Greece. Philip was hung in Turkey while Bartholomew was flayed open in Turkey as well. Notice that these people are dying in places outside of this comfortable area. They are actually out in different parts of the world doing what? Ministering and preaching the gospel and then dying as a result of it. Thomas was in India, stabbed by a spear. Matthew, the tax collector, he was martyred in Ethiopia. He was killed with a sword. James was clubbed to death. That's not a good way to go. Thaddeus and Simon the Zealot, they were both together ministering in Persia. Both of them died horribly. One was shot with arrows and the other one was crucified. But again, notice where they were. They were someplace outside of where they grew up preaching the gospel. The one who replaced Judas, Matthias, he was stoned and then beheaded. Even Jesus' half-brother James was tossed from the top of the temple, survived it, and then was killed, was beaten to death after that. Or what about Paul? Well, we know his story. He was tortured and then beheaded by Emperor Nero. The only one that did not die, that died of old age, but he did not die in the best of conditions. Remember, he was boiled and then banished to Patmos. He died of old age, but that's really the best that, that we could say of any of them, how they died. The difference between how they lived and how they died, the actual authentic apostles versus these people, there's a, stri there's a striking difference. There's a stark contrast. The issue is, the difference is that these people became apostles knowing that they were serving God. Jesus makes a statement that I don't think that a lot of these apostles understand. And when I say apostles, I mean these apostles that are modern day apostles. Jesus says this, he says, for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And that's the difference. Will lose his life for my sake will find it. Too many of these people are concerned about how they live today versus who they're serving. And so therefore, they, they don't they want more than just the regular creature comforts. They want the amenities. They want the, the fashion. They want the money. They want the status. They want the branding. This is what they want. That's one way that you can tell these people are not apostles of Christ. Amen.